We cannot entirely control what life will throw at us. We can only choose what we do with it and who we will become. Today's guest miraculously survived a horrific car accident. She talks about the physical and emotional challenges that she faced and how she found happiness in her new reality. Welcome to the Socks and Soul podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Ditto. Let's go. It is my pleasure to welcome into the studio, Lindy Markison. Thank you for coming, Lindy. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. I'm really, I'm really excited to hear your story. I'm excited for my listeners to be inspired by this tragedy in your life that you have come out of in such beautiful fashion. And I think, I think we have a lot to learn from you. And I think you're going to spend the rest of your life inspiring people to do hard things and to get through hard things. I I feel like it's kind of my calling. So, I'm excited. That is that is a that is a beautiful way to start this interview. So, um so for those of you that that aren't watching on YouTube, Lindy only has one leg. Um she lost it in a car accident about 3 years ago. And we're going to we're going to talk about that today obviously. Mm-hmm. I I want to start kind of at the beginning. Yeah. Because your your story your story is is really it's about athletics, it's about competition, it's about taking care of your body, it's about this love of, you know, all of these things combined, right? Mm-hmm. So so why don't you why don't we start there and you and, and tell us kind of growing up where you were at with athletics and uh, and kind of what your goals were um, you know, before the accident happened in 2017. Yeah, okay. So I came out of the womb like a shark. I couldn't <laughs> stop moving. I loved I love to move my body. I love to play sports. I kicked a ball around while I was at my siblings basketball games and baseball games. Um, and I was flipping off the couches and my mom didn't want to put me in gymnastics because she did gymnastics. And back then the equipment wasn't very good. And so she was injured all the time. Uh huh. And so she didn't want to put me into it. So she wanted you to be in sports where you weren't going to kill yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> she kind of wanted to like make sure I was, you know, just not breaking myself. Um, but I was flipping no matter what. So she put me in gymnastics and I, I loved it. I loved it more than basketball. I loved it because there was always something more. There was always like, oh, you got that skill. Okay. Add this or add another half turn to this. And I got addicted and I loved, I loved how it was in my daily life. Like, okay, like I go to practice every day. I loved that. Um, and so I got, how, how old were you when you started doing gymnastics? Uh, I think I was about a seven, six or seven. Okay. Yeah. Really, really, really early. Yeah. Really early. And, and that's with a mom who didn't want you to be there in the first place. Uh huh. So yeah. By the time, persistent. by the time you were seven, <laughs> she was like, okay, I can't, I can't stop this. Yeah. You know, from she's happening. Like I might, she might as well learn so she doesn't hurt herself because she doesn't know how to. Right. Um, so I, I flourished. I started competing and just kept building on that. And my practices kept getting longer and more frequent. And luckily, I my parents were really fortunate in letting me do that, you know, being being able to do that and be a gymnast. Mm-hmm. And I loved it. And, and I you did. Were, and you were good at it. I was... Uh, I was decent, you know, I don't know. And you're humble. Okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I I loved it. Um, my best event was in uneven bars. I swing like a maniac and I, I miss that a lot. Mm-hmm. But that was a good chapter in my life that I will always cherish. Mm-hmm. And that has set me up for like everything else in my life. How so? so well, just like the, the daily, the daily coin in the jar to get somewhere. Like it doesn't, it, you just, you pay the man every day mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. Not every day is going to look the same. Not every day is going to be quote unquote, like your personal record day, but it matters. Um, and it, your best is going to be different every day. And that was like a vital lesson I learned early mm-hmm. that has carried on through my life until now. Right. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I got to, um, my senior year and I wanted to, I wanted to do college gymnastics 
And so I did like a semester at BYU. Mm-hmm. Go Cougs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My alma mater. Um, and I, it didn't seem like it was worth it anymore to me. Like I wasn't, I wasn't as good as I needed to be. And my schooling, I was kind of a delinquent. I have a GED uh-huh. um, because I barely graduated high school. I think I got my diploma like two months later than everyone else. Um, you got into BYU and you had a GED? Uh, well, that's that's why I didn't stay. <laughs> okay. Because my my academics weren't up to par sure. at that at that time. And is that because you were so hyper focused on athletics, or is that just because you weren't that interested in school? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Sure. To be honest, uh-huh. uh, I'm kind of I'm was the sassy kid. Unfortunately, that was like, why is this important? Like, what is this going to serve me? Yeah. Um, and I would s- skip my other classes to go to my jewelry class uh-huh. and I would make all these things and, You're and like, this feels applicable to me. These yeah, are things that are interesting to me. Yeah. And I, so, so your mind and body was engaged in things that you found interesting and relevant to your future. Yeah. And you're like, I don't really care what temperature water boils at or how far away the moon is from the sun. Yeah. I just, <laughs> I was interested in what I wanted to to know. Um, and so I just ran with that and I was, didn't really think about future really. Mm -hmm. I struggled really, really hard with, uh, depression. And when, when did that come in? So I start, I, uh, in eighth grade. Oh, early on. Okay. mm -hmm, Yeah. Early on. Um, it's hereditary. Uh I swear everyone on my mom's side, uh, um, has some sort of depression. And so, That was really, really hard for me. And I was really sick my freshman year. Um, I had abdominal migraines and that took a long time to like sort itself out. And so I was going in and getting IVs. Oh my goodness. um, Every two weeks and missing school. And so I only had like three classes at school and then the rest online. And, and then sophomore year was my only year that I was like in at the high school, right at Lewis and Clark. Oh, wow. And junior and season senior, I did running start. Okay. And so I only had one class, my yeah. jewelry class, and then the rest at Spoken Falls yeah. Community College. How did you, how did their depression manifest itself in you as a young woman? And, and how did you deal with it going through high school? Uh, I, so it manifested in, in an eating disorder. Okay. Um, I was not feeling my body the way I needed to uh-huh. in order to have it perform at practice like it needed to. Right. And so you were a fairly high level athlete. Yeah. And so you were dealing with image issues and then not giving yourself what it needed to do the things you wanted to do physically. Yeah. So, and I, and it's just, I feel like it's the, the usual suspects as a teenage girl, right? You're like trying to fit in. I didn't have a lot of friends in high school because I was supposed to go to Ferris and I went to LC. Uh-huh. Um, and for those that don't know, these are these are schools that are what three miles apart, and you know they're the rivals, the rival right? schools. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then people like people just started getting mean, and mm. I wasn't gonna sit there. And um, so this is where the sassy Lindy kind of yeah, came t- out. It, yeah. And so I was like, well. S- oh, well, like I'm going to go eat lunch in the art room, Mm -hmm. right? And draw. And so that was like my high school years. And so that was, and I found my journal from there and I found like an entry and it was like, you know what? I think it's time I start liking myself. And that was right at the tail end of my senior year. And so I was just like fed up. I'm like, geez, like why, why am I so hard on myself why am I so un like unhappy with myself like there's got to be more there's more that there's more than this it's got to get better than this yeah and so I so I it started to get better um I kind of distanced myself from people that didn't make me feel good I think there's wisdom in that. (laughs) Yes, yes. Uh, And that was really hard, though. It's like lonely. It sounds it sounds so lonely. So you're dealing with depression and and an eating disorder and you don't have any friends. And and the people that are some of these people around you are just not nice. They're just rude. Yeah. And so you're feeling even more isolated. 
Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and, and sorry, I don't mean to cut. Okay. And I imagine, I imagine that from the outsider's viewpoint, here you are, this fairly accomplished athlete, you know, you, you're attractive, you, you come from a great family. I imagine people outside looking in had no idea what was going on with you. Oh, no. I'm like, so to be honest, I'm a very private person. Uh-huh. Um, I like to keep everything to myself or like to my close group. And, and that's that. Right. Um, so I didn't, I didn't let people know that much about me. And so they, they thought whatever they wanted about me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. That's like not who I am. So you can, whatever your impression of me, it's not the truth. Yeah. Um, and so that, that was a year after high school too. Um, cause I took, I finished my, I had like one more class or three more classes that I finished through the falls online, Mm -hmm. um, between my high school graduation and the next year, my parents were kind of like, okay, like you need to get your life together. Um, and so I got two jobs and I, I was working at my gymnastics gym that I trained at. Um, and I was still training cause I was like trying to, I'm like, you have five years after you graduated high school for the NCAA. And I was like, ah, oh, this can still happen. And so I kept, when you say training for the NCAA, what? like training to do gymnastics at, at BYU. Okay. To go mm-hmm. do collegiate. Yeah. Cause I was, a, I was like not ready to let that go. Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, I can just get my associates and then I can transfer my associates and then my high school GPA, it doesn't matter. Right. Um, and that was like kind of the plan I went forward with. And so I trained and I, and then I had two jobs and then I was going to school, um, to finish up my associate's degree so I could transfer. And there came to a point, um, and I like got way better that year than in, my improvement was greater than any other year. And it was cause I stopped caring what other people thought. Right. I was like, you know what? Why can't I do this? Like I wasn't the most like athletically gifted gymnast. I wasn't, I wasn't the best Mm -hmm. by any means. Um, but I didn't see that to be a reason why I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I got to like my birthday. I was like, how old was that? It was 20 or 19, I think 19. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I just, I came to terms and I like applied to BYU again um, and I got denied. And so I was like, okay, well, all right, that concludes that. Cool. Uh, so you'd spent this year and what you felt like was really getting your life together. Yeah. You were busy. You're in a better state mentally. <laughs> Things are really moving forward. And this dream of yours to compete in college athletics, you feel like you had lined everything up to make this happen. Yeah. And then they said, yeah. And then you cannot come here. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, hey, it's not, it's not going to happen. And I was like, okay, that's, that's fine. Right. It was really, it was really hard. Yeah. It was really hard. Cause I, I spent my life doing that. Like that was my goal and I didn't reach it. Yeah. Um, and I just had to, realign and I think the next the next day I walked into this trainer I was working with for weightlifting and she was like okay let's get you signed up for a bodybuilding competition and I said okay perfect like, that was your reaction yeah I You're was like, like okay. I need cool like I need something to fill this void sure um and so had that had that been on your mind is that something you had thought about previously well I was I was weightlifting sure for and so I was getting a lot stronger I was learning that okay I actually need to eat in order to fuel myself in order to build muscle and and so it was I was kind of getting like introduced to that mm-hmm. and so I didn't really skip a beat between gymnastics and and bodybuilding cool okay um and so I, I trained and I did one show and I, I loved it mm-hmm. because I loved, I loved the, again, I loved the daily grind. I yeah. loved what it made my day look like. Cause it made like my day really structured. Um, you thrive on, on knowing what's coming up, planning yeah. and, and really diving into that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and so I did that and I had a lot of fun doing that and, and so 
So were you doing gymnastics anymore? No, just, well, just for fun. Like I would, I was still coaching at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, I wasn't coaching. I was just uh, running the office. Right. And managing that. And I would go, I would go play. Right. And it was more fun. Oh, I bet it was. Uh, It was way more fun. Yeah. Um, so that was uh, a whole nother year, mm-hmm. right? I was doing that. Um, and at that point, so I did I my show. Sorry, I'm trying to get my timeline right. <laughs> <laughs> so I did like my bodybuilding show and I competed in bikini and fitness uh-huh. um, in, in October. And then I went to BYU, Idaho because uh-huh. I got because I got in there uh-huh. and and at that point, my mom had gotten di- re-diagnosed with cancer, mm-hmm. and this time it was pancreatic cancer. Yeah. And I was thinking there was going to be no way in hell I was going to leave my mom, right? Because right. I've already watched her go bre- through breast cancer when I was in uh, middle school oh, and wow. or and late elementary school. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was old enough to know what was going on, and... And I didn't, I didn't want to leave her. I like read everything I knew about pancreatic cancer and I, I knew that it wasn't going to look good. Yeah. And so I didn't want to leave. And again, my parents were like, okay, sorry. Like you're not, you're not staying here. Like you need to go get an education. Um, and so I drug, I drug my feet to Mm -hmm. BYU, Idaho, and I did not want to be there. And I was so frustrated that, again, my life was not going how I wanted it to. And and I met these like really I had really great roommates mm-hmm. um, that are like th- that became my best friends. Sure. And I remember it was like a month into to living there. And I like let them know. I was like, yeah, my mom is my mom is, is going through cancer treatment and I, I say things kind of like nonchalantly at first because I'm like kind of awkward with like delivering that. Uh-huh. Um, and they were just really supportive and they were exactly who I needed to to have at that time in my life. Um, and then I met I met Nate, my husband. Yeah. When I was at school, I kind of was like very strict. I was taking like as many credits as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was like 18 to 20 credits a semester. Oh my gosh. That's a load. And I just, I was just art classes too. Cause I already had all my associate's degree. I think I had one math class mm-hmm. to do just to cross it off. Right. It was like, yeah. um, but it was all my studio art classes for graphic design. Mm-hmm. And, and so I was literally, I was working nonstop, but I just had this underlying feeling that I needed to get in there and get get it done. And I didn't want to, I didn't want to be there longer than I needed to. Yeah. Where was your mental health uh, at this point? How, how were you, had you kind of gotten, figured out the depression thing and, and the eating disorder? I mean, it was that, was that, so, that thing just kind of disappear eventually or how did, how did that happen? So eating disorder did, was better. Um, I, cause I couldn't not eat right for bodybuilding. You need, you need so much protein. You need yeah, so many carbs sure. and what people like, I don't know what misconceptions people have about bodybuilding, but you actually eat a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you eat a ton. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was kind of on the back burner. Um, my depression pretty was still in the forefront. Okay. Um, and I just, I had like a lot of anxiety, mm-hmm. And I was like calling my mom and checking in with her and she was doing like treatment really well. And I'll just like give you the spoiler. She, she is in remission. That's great. Um, she's doing awesome. Awesome. And, and that worked itself out, you know? Um, so was your, was your anxiety, what, what were, what were you anxious about? What was your, where was your, the font of your anxiety? Uh, it was just like a lot of like frantic thoughts and frantic actions. Yeah. Um, I had anxiety that I wasn't going to do well. I had anxiety that again, my education was going to hold me back. Yeah. I had anxiety, um, that my life was just going to like repeat itself and I was going to work really hard for something and then have and that then run not happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And so I was really, really focused a little bit on the outcome. Sure. And that is, that's not super sustainable. Yeah. Um, and so that's kind of where that was at. And so on top of that, so Nate, Nate and I got engaged, um, to, he married, he married the crazy young 19 year old. Yes, he did. <laughs> um, and he, he was really worried about me cause he already graduated. And so he was in Sun Valley. Uh-huh. And so he would, uh, every other weekend come in to see me in Rexburg mm-hmm. and, he would always check in with my roommates to see like, oh, is she like still alive? Like, how's she doing? Like, yeah. cause I would just like work myself into the ground. Right. Um, and I, for some reason, I just felt like I, that was, I needed to get in and out and just complete it. Yes. And I, I can, I, I totally yeah. relate to this cause I did my bachelor's degree in two and a half years Yeah. for the exact same reason. Yeah. yeah. Like I just, I, I was afraid of failure. I wanted to get it done and get out of there. So it's so funny you talking this way because I was like, yes, like, same. this is same. exactly what I did. <laughs> I went to school spring and summer terms to get it done, to be done because I didn't want to, I didn't want to not have it done. I didn't want to run into a brick wall. I mean, I, this is, and I'm sure there's lots of people out there that are like, yes, that's my story. Yeah. Yes. I and, totally relate to that. And I feel like, okay, that like I could keep that up for the, the three and a half, four months of a semester. Yeah. And then you get a week break. Yeah. And I'm like, geez, why, why do we not do this in like our work lives? You know, <laughs> totally. Like I can do that. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. It's probably good that we don't, but there's probably reasons for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I graduated, um, I graduated in July. I always say I graduated like two days before my birthday. So I can say I graduated college at 20. Nice. Very and good. then I, so, and then I turned 21 Mm-hmm. And then I moved home because my parents were packing up their house and and looking to sell and get a new house because they've been in that house for like 30 plus years. And it was like way too big for just the two of them. Right. Because they were empty nesters, empty nesters sure. mm-hmm. and a huge yard. And they just wanted to not take care of that. Yeah. And I don't blame them. Absolutely. Like they've worked really hard. Mm-hmm. And so I went home to help them pack up their houses because to pack up their house. Yeah. Um, and then finish planning my wedding, right? Because yeah. I was like planning while I was so going you to school. Got, you guys got engaged in the spring, early On summer? On April Fool's. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, April <laughs> Fool's. <laughs> that's great. Uh, we went to um, Jackson, Wyoming, and I knew something was happening because he was wearing nice shoes. He usually wears that Converse. That was the dead giveaway. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, what is going on with you? <laughs> I know. Yeah, so that was beautiful. And we had a five-month engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like that was like a perfect amount of time for what needed to happen and like the events in our life. Yeah. That, because his family is farmers. And so we couldn't get... had to get, get through harvest. Mm-hmm, sure. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So that just matched up with everyone's scheduled. And I wanted to be... Married in the close as close to the fall yeah. as I could. Sure. So September first it was, uh-huh. and and so I remember getting everything for the wedding, getting my parents' house packed up, like, and I made everything for for our wedding. You designed everything, mm-hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sure. And did you love it? Did you love doing that? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Um, it turned out exactly how I wanted it. Cool. Uh, and. I like hold on to that day and hold on to those photos and like the video that we had done. Mm-hmm. And I just love it. Yeah. Cause that was like a really, really like perfect special day. And of course it is for everyone. Yeah. Um, but it, that day is something that we both held on to. Yeah. Cause we, we would have, we needed to. Yeah, right. For sure. So we got married on September 1st and we went to Kauai for a honeymoon and wonderful. We are surfing, hiking, um, laying on the beach, everything you want to do yeah. um, in Hawaii. And it was just a blast. Like, I love all those things. I love being outside. Yeah. Um, and we, we came back and he was in, we were in Sun Valley at the time. Because he's working Because he was Valley. working, yeah. He was uh-huh. working there. He was at his job for about a year. He's I a think. landscape architect, right? Uh, yes. Uh-huh. Um, and... And so we got back and I, I was really nervous because I was it was something different. Right. And I don't necessarily do the best mm-hmm. with something with different things. Um, it was just a big transition. 
like, okay, I'm now married. Um, I'm living in Sun Valley. I was really excited, uh, but I didn't I didn't have a job mm-hmm. when I when I got my feet on the ground from our honeymoon, and so that was like my first thing. I was like, okay, I need a job. Like, and so I went to the the local gym, right? Because I was like, pack our bags, we're going to the gym. Yeah, I'm. I need I'm very to, comfortable in the gym. Yeah, I need to get. <laughs> Those I need are my to, people. Yeah, I need my happy place. <laughs> um, and and so I got I got a job there. Um, to be, cause I, I taught Zumba too. Awesome. And so to be a trainer and to teach Zumba. And I think on the second day I noticed Nate forgot his gym bag. Mm-hmm. And so I was, I brought it to him and I said, okay, we're going to the gym after you're done with work. And he's just like looking at me like, are you sure? Uh, He's like, I think I forgot my bag. And I was like, no worries. I brought it. <laughs> He's like, dang it. I know. <laughs> um, so I remember like the, and this was the night before the accident. Mm-hmm. Um, I was doing exactly what I would have done. Right. I was really glad I was there. So I was doing a workout. I had a really good workout. And then we went home. And because I drove in to his work, I left my car there. And then we both drove home in his vehicle. Sure. And then the next day, I rode to work with him to grab my car and mm-hmm. to go up um, into the Starbucks to work on our wedding thank you notes. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and I remember walking away from him that day, and I remember the light. I remember, like, I wore, like, a dress and some sandals and he said, hey, you need to drive careful. Like, please drive careful. You remember him saying that? Mm-hmm. And he, and. Does I he remember s- saying that? Yes. Yeah. Does he remember why he said that? I don't. Is that a common thing know. that he would say to you? Uh, I don't know. Interesting. That's okay. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. I think it, I think a little bit of intuition. Mm-hmm. Um, and I turned around and I said, of course, always. And so I went about my day and the timeline from there doesn't make a lot of sense for what I do habitually. Mm -hmm. Um, Usually I'll block out at least three hours to work Mm -hmm. on a project or anything. And the turnaround time was like way quicker than that because I was like traveling south um, back down into Haley, Idaho. And and my tire blew on that two lane highway. Mm-hmm. that's like 55, 60 miles an hour and there's no median in between. There's nothing in between except two, two lines. Um, and I went into oncoming traffic against a Ford F-350 hauling a backhoe and my car was sheared in half as, as well as my leg, um, so that's what they knew automatically. They knew I had extensive trauma because I had a compound fracture on my other femur and my tibia was shattered and then my other leg was gone. Um, it was completely ripped off. It wasn't like mangled enough to to that it needed to be amputated just because there wasn't any way they to fix it. They didn't actually amputate your leg. No. It was it taken was, off during the accident. Yes. And... And so I personally, I was in the, uh, the Haley emergency room and they stabilized me enough. They gave me like three units of blood at that point and they found out who, who I was and they didn't know I was married yet. Um, so they called my mom. And so my mom got that awful phone call that you never want to get for anybody in your family, especially your child. Mm Mm-hmm. And they said, okay, we have, is your daughter Lindy, Lindy Mattinson? She's like, yes. Uh, she has been in a, a really bad accident. She has extensive trauma to her lower limbs. She is, one of her legs was amputated. And we've given her three units of blood already. And we're stabilizing her. And she she's on her way to St. Al- St. Alphonsus in Boise, Idaho. And so... My mom like called everybody else, right, and t- and had to break that news. And Nate got that phone call from my mom, 
from there, I was in ICU. They were trying to do as much as they could with each surgery as my body could handle it. Um, I had massive internal bleeding. Um, my spleen ruptured. And, and so I had that removed and I had like 18 inches of my colon removed because it did, it blocked blood flow. So Mm -hmm. it died. Sure. Uh, my sound side, that's what, um, that's like the technical term for the full leg that I have. Uh Um, I had a compound fracture in my femur. Oh man. And so I have a little Harry Potter lightning bolt (laughs) scar from that. And so they put a titanium rod through my femur Mm -hmm. and then I had two screws connecting my femur to my pelvis Mm -hmm. and then two screws in the back of my pelvis in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then on my tibia, I have, well, just a rod through my tibia as well. Mm -hmm. And so my sound side is completely metal. Yeah. Um, and I still have all that hardware and that's going to stay in there for the rest of my life. And Sometimes I can feel the screws back in my pelvis if I'm like laying on the ground. Um, so I avoid that because no it's kidding. not super comfortable. Oh, yeah. Um, so by the time I was uh, out of ICU, I was in ICU for two weeks, but I had 30 units of blood. Oh, my word. And you have like four to five in your body. Right. So I kept. You were just bleeding. I kept bleeding out. Um, so much so like they finished a surgery. And then a few days later, I started bleeding out again, and they didn't know where it was coming from. Wow. And so my family, you know, my family's in the medical field, mm-hmm. so they um, guided Nate through making those decisions because mm-hmm. um, it was Nate's call in the end because right. he's my husband. Yep. Um, but it was also supported by my family. For sure. Um, and they said, okay, we're, we're, we're not playing God here. Um, and so they put me on palliative care, which is no blood products, no blood, um, no life saving actions. Right. Right. Um, and I kept bleeding out. And so I, they were expecting me to die. Um, because they just couldn't stop the bleeding. Yeah. They couldn't stop the bleeding. So I was put on palliative care and my dad and my husband, uh, they said their goodbyes. So, so at this point, they they were sure that this was the end. Mm-hmm. They had made the tough decision to say, "Okay, we're we're artificially keeping her alive right now." Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna let her go. Yeah, and my family. So my grandpa was in a motorcycle accident, and so we've already been through something like that, right? Um, and at this point, it had been. So this was like two weeks while I was in ICU. Okay. okay. Um, and my grand my grandfather had a brain injury as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and they didn't know any anything about my brain because you can't go into the MRI I machine with everything that was keeping me alive, right? right? Um, so they didn't know that, and I kept bleeding out. And so, okay, we're just we're just gonna put it in God's hands, and yeah. okay, we're we're. Like just make her comfortable. Yeah, my mom's like, I'm not gonna watch her starve to death. Yeah, so and you're com- you're completely unconscious through this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and my siblings flew in to say their goodbyes, um, and they were all in the hotel room, and they talk about like how sacred that night was, all of my dirty secrets that ha- were spilled <laughs> by my siblings. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next morning, I was sitting up eating peaches. What? Yes. And they couldn't believe it. That sassy little teenager was like, oh, no, you didn't. Yeah. I am coming back. Yeah. You're not done with me yet. <laughs> and it's so funny because I, I hate fruit. I don't eat fruit. I'm like, I think, I have a, I think I'm allergic to it because I like my tongue starts to itch. And, uh-huh. and so, but I was eating peaches and I was like swallowing and... They're kind of, it was like total whiplash, right? Because they were just like talking about, like reminiscing on what you do at people's funerals. Right. They were saying their goodbyes. Yeah. And they were, the next done your usual eulogy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so the next, the next day I was up eating peaches and 
they said, okay, they asked me what I wanted to do because I was like, I had tubes out of my throat by then. I was extub- extubated. Mm-hmm. Um, and they asked what I wanted to do. And I said, hashtag pink. And my sister figured it out that I meant like hashtag fight because the first time my mom had breast cancer the first time. Right. Um, and so it was like hashtag fight pink, right? Yeah. Because pink is breast cancer awareness, which also is October. Right. Um, and and so they rallied. They're like, okay, like she wants to fight. Okay. We're in. We're in. Yeah. Um, and at that at that point, like I I, I mean I was like not press pressing save after every day they saw they got me an an MRI to see what my brain looked like um and I had a severe diffuse axonal head injury which Which, is like the worst like one of the worst types of brain injuries you can get okay people are left in a vegetative state usually usually and so they said okay she's gonna be alive but she's not gonna hold a job she's not probably gonna be able to walk She's not gonna be who you who you had. And she, what about she, your memories? W- um, did they think you would remember your li- your previous life? They were unsure. They didn't they, know. They, yeah, they were. Just like, this is so traumatic. They're just like, this is what it usually looks yeah. like. Yeah, and so what a diffuse axonal head injury is like. All your your brains, you have um, like your neurons connecting. And so that's sheared in half. So your neurons don't have any connections in your brain. Whoa. Um, and I couldn't pick up my pencil. And so I had to work on like feeding myself again. And again, I don't totally remember all of this. Right. But this is what I was doing. Um, they were still pumping me like full of pain medication. <laughs> um, and at that point, my mom like was like, okay, we're done. We're done giving her. She's not complaining about pain. Right. Um, stop it. Right. Cause it was making me super drowsy. And so I was sleeping all day yeah. and I was like a caged animal. Mm-hmm. I was pacing up and down my hospital bed and they, they put up a, a sign above my bed that says caution patient, ha- patient has a tendency to bite. Cause I was biting people. Cause in your brain, you're like your aggression and your love are like right next to each other. Oh my goodness. And so that like, got mixed up and so I was biting everybody. So you're trying to show gratitude or, you know, whatever and you yeah. just ended up trying to yeah. chomp people's fingers off. Like the best way I can describe it is just like you're a caged lion. Yeah. And you're hungry. Your body's trying to communicate, but stuff has been disconnected mm-hmm. and it doesn't know how to do it. Yeah. Wow. And I like feel bad. I don't remember a lot of that obviously <laughs> I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure nobody has hard feelings about this I know yeah <laughs> I was like sorry I bit you and like drew blood like oh you were really getting after it yeah oh man so and then I had all these like scars like all these incision marks and I had a graft site on my leg because I didn't have enough flesh to cover my amputation uh-huh. um and I they couldn't pick at that and so I had mittens and I was just completely like not there yeah for the next uh I don't know like four weeks the next month and so at that point it was like okay maybe like like why why did this happen like she does like my parents and my husband were like I know Lindy like this is not a life she wants at all Mm -hmm. like why why is she alive if this is what she gets yeah um and I remember waking up one day and this was like five and a half weeks after the accident. And I remember waking up and I like didn't know where I was. And this is like the first day I started to like click save on my memories after each day. Yeah. And I asked my mom, I was like, mom, where, where am I? And she's like, you're, you're in the hospital. Like you were in a really bad accident. Um, you lost your leg. And I was like, well, how long have I been here? She's like, well, five and a half weeks. And I was like, well, what the hell have I been doing? And that was like such a Lindy thing to say. Like, She's like, what do you, what do you think you've been doing, Lindy? <laughs> I know. I'm you've like, been healing. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I remember just like feeling that initial like 
loss, right? That overwhelming like despair. Cause I, I loved my I loved my legs. I loved I was just surfing in Hawaii. Yeah. Um and hiking. And so I was like kind of in total disbelief because you never think something like that is gonna happen to you. That's true. Right. Yep. Um and I spent a lot I s like stayed in that state of mind a long time. I was like, geez, like was it because I wasn't grateful enough? Like I was, like I, I even enjoyed running down the stairs as fast as I could. Yeah. And I was like, I was kind of in disbelief that something I loved so much that I learned to love so much was take taken away. So you were in this, you were in this state of why, why would this happen to me? Why would yeah. somebody that is so grateful for her body and all the wonderful things it can do and in your mind, you, you you do you love to explore everything that your body is capable of doing, surfing yeah. and hiking and working out and bodybuilding, and you know and and you you know lots of people who don't seem to you know have that same love for life and why would this happen to you? Yeah, and I imagine you wrestled with that for a long time. Yeah, and I I thought like oh geez like is it because I did X Y Z terrible thing and. Like, this is like my punishment right. and, and that's like, so not true. Like, I don't think I, d I do not believe everything happens for a reason. Sure. I do not believe that. Mm -hmm. I believe some things do. Yeah. But I don't believe everything. I don't think, I don't think I was like hit by a truck for a reason. Right. Um, I think it was just, Hey, we're in chaos in this world yeah. where anything can happen to anybody. Right. And I just like drew the wrong stick that day. Yeah. Um, and it has nothing to do with me as a person for what happened. Right. And that was again, hard one ground after a while. Um, but what a, what a beautiful thing to learn young in life, you know, that, yeah. that the, the, I mean, it, it's a, it's a horrible thing to have to go through, but, but it's a great lesson that you can teach out of this experience to other people. Yeah. You know, don't, don't, don't spend your life beating yourself up because something bad happened to you or because you were dealt a short hand. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge advocate for that. Cause mm -hmm. I'm like, no, like you get to create the reasons for why stuff happened. Yeah. Like the power is with you. Yeah. Like you are the creator of your reality. Yeah. It's not a predetermined reason why something happened. Yeah. Um, and again, that like took months, right? It wasn't like I wasn't laying in the hospital bed like, ah, like I see this now, right? right? Um, like it this was, has been a process over the last yeah. couple of years, I imagine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so after I was, my parents and my family were trying to get me back in Spokane to go to St. Luke's rehab because mm -hmm. it was just easier for everybody. Yeah. Because they already have taken, they maxed their time off and whatnot. Yeah. And, and so... I got back in Spokane for St. Luke's and I was in rehab for, uh, 15 days and I did speech therapy, which is more than just talking, but it's like working on the way you think. Yeah. Um, and physical therapy and occupational therapy and recreational therapy. Mm -hmm. And like my day was just packed with like therapy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was, I remember picking up the pen the first time to write my name. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I, it was a loss. I was like, oh no, like I'm an artist and my, that doesn't look like I wrote my name. Right. Um, that's not how I write. Yeah. I was like, what happened? I was like, oh no, like, don't like, don't take this way too. Yeah. Um, and so I got, I got discharged from rehab and I, everyone is back at work. And so I spent a lot of time at home and I just like watched Netflix all day, to yeah. be honest with you. Sure. Um, I had my outpatient physical therapy and I was still in a wheelchair because my pelvis was like shot, like cracked in a few places and yeah. that takes a while to heal. Oh yeah. And so I was in my wheelchair for three months and it was in the winter, um, and I ended up getting my first prosthetic leg like a couple of days before Christmas. And so I 
It was like I had a lot of fun with those jokes like, oh, I got a stocking filler. <laughs> Actually, like, <laughs> uh, uh, and that was what the first year looked like. I started going back to the gym and I'd like cry after every day, every time I went because it wasn't you, the same. Not because it was painful, but because your body couldn't do the things that it used to do. Yeah, I just I it was a reality check to how much my body had atrophied. Um, and so uh, that was really, really hard for me. Yeah. Um, I started working back at the gymnastics gym, um, the January following the accident. Wow. That seems fast. Yes. Um, I was just itching. Um, you just was, needed to get out. And I needed stuff. some, I needed somewhere that needed me. Yeah. I, I don't know like how to say this. Um, Nate and I separated, Mm -hmm. um, just, and it wasn't anything to do with the leg. It was all because of the brain injury. I basically like went through puberty Mm -hmm. again, Uh um, just because that's where my brain was. That's where it was making connections. And I was doing the same things I did in high school and, and it was just, it was a compound effect. Like it was just like, I was unhappy. I was mad. I was angry. And people were telling me like, Oh, like you're alive. Like you need to be grateful. And And you're like, really? I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, have you, do you see what I've lost? Right. Like literally take a step in my shoes. Yeah. Oh wait, I only have one. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Like, and I like got so feisty and mad. Um, and, you know, the, the year, the year anniversary comes up and I, I finally, I finally looked at myself. I'm like, Lindy, oh my gosh, like, this is not okay. Like, I don't want to live my life like this. I want my life back. Yeah. And I remember waking up one day and I, I asked my mom, cause I was living at my parents' house while we were separated. And I asked, and we had divorce papers filed, like filled out and ready to sign and, and I woke up one morning and I, I went into the kitchen and I asked my mom where, where Nate was. Um, and she told me like, Lindy, um, like you, you left. And I was like, what do you, what do you mean? And so I didn't even like re- remember that. This is what you're talking about. The post trauma amnesia. Yeah, amnesia. And so I reached out, I reached out to Nate, um, and he's like, okay, hold on. Like I have whiplash. Um, I need some time. Yeah. And I was like, okay, like you deserve it. And I, I honored that. And it was really, really hard not to jump right in. Right. Cause yeah. I, cause I was ready to, cause right. I, I, I was brain injured. Like I don't, I didn't right. remember what had happened. Right. Um, and I just, I started, I started reading like a book a week. Um, I started reading a lot. I read a lot of self-improvement books. It's like my favorite genre. Um, I started drawing every day Mm -hmm. and it was just like a quick five minute doodle, Mm -hmm. but I was like going to get my, like my skill back with a pen. Yeah. Um, and I, again, backed away from everybody that wasn't going to help me get to where I wanted to go. Yeah. And I clung on to the ones that were like helping me be helping me supporting me as the, as the lady I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, and then I reached out to a counselor, um, that Nate had seen, Mm -hmm. um, both individually, but we went to the same counselor, Mm -hmm. um, but not together. Yeah. And I started going to counseling every week and that like, I, everyone needs counseling, even if, (laughs) even if nothing has ever happened in your life, like we all experience trauma, like even like going through puberty, like that's trauma. Um, and so I started going to therapy and it made a huge difference. Oh my gosh. Night and day. Like I, I literally, it literally pulled me out of like the darkest black hole. Um, and 
and I kept being patient. I'd write in my journal every day. I would vlog myself as a journal entry Mm -hmm. because if I didn't write it down, like I wanted to make sure I was going to remember my days. I was trying really, really hard to work on my memory. Because you you were concerned about this amnesia stuff as well. Yeah. Like, am I going to divorce my husband and not remember it tomorrow. Yeah. I need to, Uh I need to start tracking some of this stuff. Yeah. And so I was really, really concerned with that. I was like, oh my gosh, like, am I not going to remember my life? And I was really anxious about that. And I wasn't going to let that happen. Um, cause I, I like when I get anxiety, I always ask my question. I always ask myself the question like, okay, what am I going to do about it? Um, how can I, how can I cope with this? Like what's going to, manage my anxiety a little bit better. And mm-hmm. it's like, okay, like write in a journal, vlog, record it, make sure you have documentation of your days. And so that's what I did. And I like started going to the gym every morning and I would just walk on the treadmill and I would think about looking at the art pieces in the Louvre. Mm-hmm. Cause that's something I've always wanted to do. And so I started getting like the pieces of my life back together the way I wanted it. And it was like super cool. Cause I was in the position where I was like, okay, who do I want to be? Yeah. Who do I want to be? Yeah. And I would just take things that I've learned like from the accident and like things from myself, like pre-accident and, and I divide that as like Lindy 1.0 is pre-accident. Lindy 2.0 is Lindy during accident. And Lindy 3.0 is like who I am now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so that's kind of how we differentiate in like yeah. conversations with, with my husband and my family, yeah. <laughs> just so that everyone knows that like Lindy 2.0 is like, to me, she was a different person. She sure. just, she just had my, j- just had my face. Right. Um, cause I like severed a couple of relationships, a couple of friendships, um, that I don't have a lot of rec- recollection, rec- rec- recollection, recollection. There we go. Yeah. Um, but it happened. Yeah. And, and so I have to get through that for sure. Um, so I, I started putting myself back together with how I wanted, with what I wanted to be. Um, I looked at my daily life. I looked at where I wanted to be in the future, where I wanted to, I wanted to be married to Nate. Um, and so we like started dating again around Halloween and it was, it was slow. Um, and do you feel like in a lot of ways with your relationship with him, you had to start over? Uh, in some ways, yes. Or was this more like you talked about with your relationships that you had severed, you needed to kind of earn each other's trust again. Yeah, I def, yeah, that was, it was just, it was very difficult. Like I, I had to be very, very patient because he had a totally different experience than I did. Right. Um, and and I, he remembered his. Uh-huh. And I had to honor that and he had to honor where I was Yeah. as well and what I had been through. And so it was a huge bonding experience. Um, like it, we, we dated from... Like it was funny, we like we're married already, but we were we were dating, mm-hmm. right? Um from like November until um we moved into a new apartment in first of March. Wow. So you did another five month engagement essentially. Yeah. 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 And we like were we did we didn't spend holidays together that year. We did our like own thing, like hmm. we did our own like Christmas like a couple weeks before and things just looked a little bit different. Yeah. And that was okay. Um I also we were also very private during yeah. that time. Sure. Um we didn't let people know really anything cuz it was between us. Yeah, it's none of their business. Yeah, totally. not even and that was like really hard for our families. Um to not, to not know everything. Right. And yeah. to like, want to like force it, f- force the timeline quicker than, than we both wanted it to go. Yeah. Um, and so we, we always joke, like we chose each other, we chose each other three times. Right. And so it makes our, like, it makes our bond together so much deeper. For sure. Um, and we both wouldn't take anything back. Yeah. Um, for how special our relationship is and how much we cherish each other. Yeah. And just our, our daily 
life together as a married couple um, and our communication. Like we've learned how to communicate really well. Um, I learned way better to communicate my mental health and where I was, yeah. which was a huge win for us because I, I had a really hard time communicating when I was not doing the best mentally. Right. Um, and therapy helped Im- tremendously yeah. with that. And, and so fast, fast forward a little bit. Um, he was like, well, why don't, why don't you go to like Paris sport? And so I, I, Walked into practice. I crutched in because I was in between legs. And, I mean, were you excited about that prospect, or were you like, yeah? I mean, so they took so I, they took me while I was still in a wheelchair, and I was I was mad. I was like, I don't want to be here. Yeah, like I because it wasn't totally my choice, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I waited until. I looked it up again and I went to like the traumatic brain injury support group and I was getting like all the help I could find in order to feel like I had a pack again because I would walk into like a group of people and I'd be like, okay, you're talking about at that point, like what clothes you want to wear and I'm trying to, to handle like my marriage. Yeah. And so it was like really, really hard to connect to people at that point because my life experience in that moment was so intense. Yeah, that's a good word for it. Uh, yeah. I complicated, <laughs> messy. Complicated, intense. Yeah, I was trying to... You're trying to figure out how your body works again. Yeah. You're trying to rehab skills that you had. You're dealing with major mental health issues. And to put the cherry on top, you're trying to figure out this marriage thing. Yeah. And so... So luckily I like went to Paris sport practice on my own and I was like, Hey, like I would like to run. And they said, okay. Um, and I like haven't missed a practice since. And I felt like accepted for the first time. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah, we all have, we all have disabilities, but that's not who we are. Yeah. That's not who I am in my, in my core. Like it, yeah, it's a part of me, but it's not who I am at my core. Um, and I've like been training with them and I got my running blade, uh, like five days before my first race. Oh my gosh. And it, oh yeah. It was like 40 seconds, like 40, the longest 40 seconds of my life. Oh, and by the way, it was a hundred meters. So <laughs> <laughs> it took you 40 seconds to run a hundred meters. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh-huh. my, that's pretty humbling experience. <laughs> oh my gosh. This whole, this whole process has been totally humbling. It's like, okay. Um, and then I trained really hard and then come back winter I like PR'd like 22 seconds. I was like, okay, now we're cooking. I just cut that puppy in half. <laughs> All right. I know. Let's do that one more time. I know. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. Um, and again, it's just, it's just incorporated what I wanted in my daily life. Yeah. Um, and I like, couldn't be, I couldn't be happier. I'm like, oh my gosh, everything in my life has set me up for this. So what I thought like was a huge setback and for a little bit it was, Mm -hmm. but it's like propelling, like it propelled my marriage way forward. Yeah, Like we have experienced that most people don't get in their lifetime. You've experienced a lifetime of stuff in in three years years. of marriage. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, we can get through this stuff. Oh yeah. (laughs) We can get through teenagers. No problem. (laughs) I know. know. Oh my goodness. We like talk about that all the time. Um, but the what happened, it's just set me up to propel me forward. And it comes back to I get to live my life more creatively, which I hold that individuality as a creator so close to my heart. Because um, that's like the first thing that ticked off my self-worth was that I was a creator. Yeah. Um. And I was an artist and that I needed to, and it was like part of my calling. Yeah. Um, it's what I feel like called to do. And I like heard this somewhere. It's like the language of the soul is longing. Mm-hmm. 
And so I look at like what I long for Mm -hmm. and it's like for creation. Yeah. And then for, for movement. Yeah. And, and like physically, mentally, emotionally. And that's kind of what my life is setting up to do. And I'm kind of looking back and seeing like, okay, like I, I see this. Um, I had a little bit of a beginner's luck and I'll tie my favorite book in here. Um, the Alchemist, Mm -hmm. um, by Paulo Coelho. Um, you try something first and you get a bit, a little bit of luck with it. You get super successful. You get that taste of success. Uh And so you want to do more. Right. And so you continue with it and then you hit like a block where Mm -hmm. the luck runs out. Yeah. And in that time, it's really important to stay grateful, to see like the signs, the omens for your next step, for Mm -hmm. the next best, next best thing. Cause, it, cause you can't look at the whole staircase. Right. It's just your next best step that right. you're going to take. Um, and you can't see those omens or those next steps unless you're grateful. Yeah. Um, and so I believe that gratitude totally grounds you in order to move. And that I feel like the alchemist like illustrates that perfectly. It's mm-hmm. universal. It's, an amazing book that I try to read every year. Oh, you, this is a reread for you. Yes. Cause it means something different. It's yeah. like a sacred text that whenever you read it again, you pick up something different from it for because sure. you're a different, you're a different right, person. You progress to a different level mm-hmm. and you're ready for whatever next lesson there is to teach. Exactly. Pick great books and reread them. Yes. If yeah. you learn from it once, you can probably learn something from it again. Yeah. That's great. But I believe that like you bring your bring who you are to to the book yeah. at that point. Sure. And that and you're never you're never the same person. You're never the same river twice. You don't step in the same river. Yeah. Um, literally, like your body's always evolving. Yeah. Um, and so that is one of my favorite books. It's a it, it's just an amazing story, Lindy. And I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like today you, you love and appreciate your body and what it can do more than ever before in your life. Oh yes. And you're at peace with, with what it is and, and what you're doing with it and, and, and continuing to challenge it every day. Yeah. And, and it's interesting because, because this creativity side of what you're talking about, you know, it, it's easy for us to get fixated on the things that we can see. Mm-hmm. Right. And what we can see with you is you're this Paralympic athlete and in athletics and bodybuilding. This has all been a huge, important part of your life. Yeah. But but there's this whole side of you that is mental health and art and creation and design that that has played even a more important role in your journey of finding a place where you're happy and successful. Yeah. In, in your life and, 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 and content with with what you're doing now, but with what the future holds. Yeah. It's just so beautiful. It's just a great story. Thank you. And although tragic, just got to make you excited for for the rest of your life. Having learned these things at a pretty young age, (laughs) you're 20. I'm 24. (laughs) 24. (laughs) You've you've experienced more tragedy than most people do in their lifetimes. Yeah. And uh, and although it was rocky, you, you just came out this you know, just this incredible human being. Yeah. I always laugh. They're like, oh my gosh, like you're so positive and like, and that's true. Right. But I am like a huge advocate. Like if you want to be angry, be angry, be sad, be whatever, be yeah. whatever you feel. Like your emotions don't mean like anything about you. They're just emotions. They just come, they go yeah. if you let them Yeah. and you don't, and you like pick which ones you're going to grab onto. Yeah. And so, like, I do have bad days. I do have sure. moments where I'm angry that I'm an amputee and I'm angry that I have a brain injury. Yeah. Um, and I can, I can tell, like, I have those moments, but I don't dwell on those. Like, mm-hmm. they come, they go, they pass through like a cloud. Everyone's a sky. And clouds are just emotions that pass through us. But there's beautiful colors in the sky. There's, it's infinite. Um, And that's what I feel like I'm here to do is I'm here to like let people recognize the power they have within. And it's infinite. Yeah. 
That's a beautiful analogy. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Is that too cheesy? I no, don't know. It's so I'm like great. a cheesy person. I don't know. <laughs> it's so great. And 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 it really plays to, you know, what you said right at the beginning of this about making deposits every day, you know, yeah. to to your success. And not all those deposits look the same. No. You know, our, our sky is beautiful and ever changing and critical to our you know, success here, you know, sustaining life on earth. But it's not always the same. And and a healthy climate, it's, it's not, important for it not to be. Uh-huh. It's so yes. great. The polarity. We need that. Yeah. The yin and the yang. Yeah. OK, so so you have kind of adopted this Wonder Woman thing. Ah, uh, yes. I've seen that a little bit on, like on your Instagram and some hashtags yeah. and stuff like so that. So I have... I've loved superheroes mm, all growing up. For sure. I loved their like origin stories. Yeah. And I love, I just love the, the magic of them. Yeah. Um, and, and I love Wonder Woman. You're right. She's like this powerful female. Yeah. She's like dark hair like I am. Totally. Um, she does what she thinks is right mm-hmm. no matter what. Yeah. She doesn't apologize for who she is. Mm-hmm. And I think like, Everyone has a little bit of a superhero in them, you know, um, and it's their own and we need everyone. Yeah. And, and I, I just love, I love Wonder Woman. It's awesome. I loved her since I was like in fifth grade. I like collected stickers and, and she's just awesome. And it all comes back to like love with her. And I. Like the only thing that can save the world is love. Yes. And I truly believe that. Yeah. Um, and so I relate to Wonder Woman a lot. For those that aren't watching, her socks are Wonder Woman socks. Yes. And and I always ask my guests, you know, to wear socks with a story. And yeah. so I love that. I love that story. I love that symbolism. I don't have Wonder Woman socks for you, but this is my favorite brand of socks. It's Stance is the name of them. And these are, these are, these are flowers, uh, or these are roses, you know, and roses have thorns. Uh-huh. And, uh, and as you were talking about the sky, I was thinking about, you know, roses are beautiful, but they've got a little edge to them. Yeah. They got a little sass to them <laughs> like you do. And, uh, so my, my mom calls me an English rose. Too. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Well, if I would have asked her then I would have been, I would have had a better story, but I wanted to oh give my you goodness. Thank a pair you. of my favorite socks. I can't thank you enough for coming down and telling your story today. Thank you. I've enjoyed being here. You're a, you're a remarkable young woman and uh, I'm super excited to see, you know, you compete in the Paralympics yeah. and to run and to jump and to do all those things. Well, thanks everybody for joining us uh, on the show today for Socks and Soul. And we hope you've been inspired by this episode. Uh, Lindy, how can people reach out to you? How can we find you? Um, I live on Instagram mostly. And my Perfect. tag is just lindy.marcuson. Great. I'll connect, I'll connect that in the show notes so that people can find you. And, uh, and also put some pictures up on the feed of, you know, maybe of your accident and some things from your Instagram Yeah. so that people can, uh, can, can, can see some of that progress. Yeah. I love, I like refer to them as like my team, you know, <laughs> your, your pack is my you pack. Said. Yeah. I love it. I love it. All right. That's it for today. Thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you next time. The Socks and Soul podcast is a production of Ditto Film Media. If you enjoy this content, be sure to give it a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. Join the conversation on Facebook at Socks and Soul Podcast.